everyone and welcome to the very first breakfast television here in Montreal. I'm Alex Depati and I'm Joanne Vacas. So happy to, to, to start the week with you, to start the show with you. To start the beginning of something amazing. Uh, it's going to be an amazing experience. We're all super excited. I'm, in the I'm studio hyper. Here. I've been screaming all morning. <laughs> Alex hates me already. We've in the all show been screaming started. all morning yeah. in studio. It's amazing. Um, and it took lots and lots of work from lots and lots of people to make this happen. It's the beginning of something great, and we are so fortunate to be and here. I'm so happy to share this with you. You're going to see, you're going to meet all of the cast and crew here. You're going to see who's doing what today. That beautiful view that you just saw, well, that's from right outside of our BT studios in downtown Montreal. And there's so much to come. It's dark outside. I know some of you are just know, getting up. I, I feel like I have never been so excited that it's 6 a.m. in the morning. I know. I didn't sleep last night. I kept thinking the alarm wasn't going to go off, so I was oh, like, but, oh, it's 2 o'clock. Oh, it's 3 o'clock. But we're here. But we're here. And uh, it is, as you saw, it's a little bit gray out there. And uh, to tell you, or to tell all of us, actually, if it's going to be raining, if it's going to be sunny, we hope for something good because it is the first show. Uh, here is our very own Catherine Verdon Diamond. She shines bright like a diamond with your latest <laughs> in weather and traffic. Catherine. Thank you so much, Joanne. My cheeks are hurting because I'm smiling so much. So excited to give you your first forecast. Here it is right now in Montreal, 19 degrees. The wind's coming in from the south-southwest at around 13 kilometers per hour. A little humid. We were dealing with a little few showers here in the past six hours. Those slowly moving out east, so better temperatures. I put in a favor to Mother Nature. We're hoping for some sunshine today. Here's your quick three-day forecast. 27 degrees holding steady for the next three days. We have a few sunny breaks today, mainly sunny skies on Tuesday. And then look at Wednesday, a few isolated showers. Here's a first look at your traffic update on your bridges. If you're coming in from the Mercy at this hour, very smooth, only about 10 minutes. Coming in from the Champlain, you're looking at around a 10 minute drive on the bridge itself. No delays as you're approaching the bridge. Pretty much the same thing for the Victoria inbound. A very smooth ride at around 12 minutes from Victoria Avenue to University. And finally, Curé Poirier, probably your best option this morning. Five minutes, no delays whatsoever. Alex? Thank you so much, Catherine. It's time now for today's news and all your headlines, where Joanne is standing by. Thank you so much, Alex. A man is between life and death this morning after he was found badly burnt in a fire in the plateau last night. Our Laura Casella is live on the scene right now. And Laura, you're, you were hearing that the fire looks suspicious. Joanne, you can still smell the smoke in the air and the damage is quite extensive to this three-story residential building at 4401 L'Avenue de l'Hôtel de Ville. Now, when firefighters arrived here at 8.30 last evening, the flames were extremely violent and spreading rapidly. The fire started in the first floor apartment, spread to the upper floors, then through the roof. Now, firefighters found a man on the first floor. He was in cardiac arrest with severe burns to his entire body. He had has been transported to hospital where he remains in critical condition. Police have not been able to identify him because the burns are so extensive. Now, neighboring homes were evacuated as a precaution, but most people have been able to return home since. What caused this explosion followed by a fire? That remains a mystery at this point. Firefighters were not able to pinpoint it, and that's why the case has been transferred over to Montreal Police arson investigators who will be arriving shortly on the scene. Joanne? Thank you so much. That is our Laura Casella live with the latest on that suspicious fire in the plateau. A 25-year-old man is scheduled to appear in court this morning after his erratic behavior forced an Air Transat flight to make an emergency landing in Montreal last night. The man allegedly threatened staff on the Istanbul-bound flight. The plane from Toronto landed in Montreal around 9.30 p.m. The man was arrested without incident. The flight was delayed for several hours as investigators talked to witnesses on the plane. Police say they still don't know what prompted the threatening behavior. Pretty gruesome story now out of Toronto. Toronto police are investigating a grisly crime. An elderly woman mutilated by a man who cut off her nose. 
The attack happened in broad daylight. Saturday afternoon, a man approached a 76-year-old woman who was in the young Dundas Square elevator and severed her entire nose. The woman was rushed to hospital where she underwent surgery to have it reattached. She's since been released. Police say they don't know why the gruesome attack happened in the first place. We're not really sure of the motive. Was it a hate crime? Was it a robbery? Maybe the person got, uh, uh, didn't want to go through with it any further. Uh, we don't know what happened. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's so scary. It just can't happen to anybody. That's, that's just on. disgusting. The attack happened as hundreds of spectators and families were enjoying Buskerfest just steps away. The only description police have of the suspect is that he is 40 to 60 years old and between 5 foot 6 and 5 foot 8. And they could not be specific about what kind of blade was used by the assailant. United Nations inspectors are hitting the ground this morning in Syria. They plan to sift through the site of a suspected chemical weapons attack that left more than 300 people dead. The UN team left their Damascus hotel about a few hours ago. The Syrian government gave investigators the green light to comb through the area of the alleged gas assault yesterday. According to White House officials, the move came too late to be credible. Washington claims enough time has passed since the suspected use of chemical weapons so that evidence could have been scrubbed away. Doctors Without Borders estimate 355 people were killed last week after toxic gases were allegedly released over a Damascus suburb. And about 4,500 homes are under threat from a wildfire burning near Yosemite National Park. The fire has consumed more than 129,000 acres and continues to grow. Residents in California's Sierra foothills fear for their homes and for their animals. 3,000 firefighters are battling the blaze as it approaches dangerously close to San Francisco. And a very interesting story now. A tip of the hat in Tokyo today where folks set a new Guinness World Record. 1,073 people flung their hats in the air to set the record for the most people throwing hats in the air simultaneously. The previous record was 656 people. This event was organized to wish Tokyo good luck as they bid for the 2012 Olympic Summer Games. That is all for your headlines for now. Over to Elias and Alex with sports. Thank you so much, Joanne. No flicking of the hat for no. us. Uh, we, Elias and I, will be on the BT couch talking sports every morning. And they've got to they've got to have some rules about these world records. <laughs> They're record watering for, down the brand. Yeah. <laughs> Let's throw it in the air. It's a world record. I'm sorry. World records for everything. From here, we're going to the Impact. There was a big game against Houston yes. uh, this weekend. Major, like, decisive win from the Impact 5-0. Back in first place. In the East, yeah. I know this is great. I mean, uh, it's been a long season. They've had an amazing start. Uh, a bit some struggles. But now they're coming back. The players are playing well. This big win is very important. Back first in the East. And there's something else happening here, which is even more important. And that is the Impact are really grabbing a hold of the city. I mean, people are talking about Marco DeVaio, Patrice Bernier, Jeb Brofsky, and those names are resonating with people. And I hear people talking about them on the streets, and, right. you know, you got to say... People that, wearing the shirts, the scarves, yeah. a lot more. And this is great. Like, I know that there's a lot of interest. Tons of people go and watch the games at the Saputo Stadium. I've been there. The, the atmosphere is, is amazing. Electric. The yeah. ultras are just yeah. <laughs> over, the, you know, over the top in the best of ways. And this is great because they have two games in hand now. And yes. uh, we're, we're getting back to uh, first place in the East. And, you know, listen, Montreal's a hockey city, but yeah. we now have a, a, a team there that's capturing the hearts of the city again, and it's great to see. Only the second year in the MLS, so yeah. it's looking great. Yeah. Now, you're a softball player, big softball, baseball fan. Softball, baseball, yeah. So we're going to ball. Little Leagues, World, World yes. Series Little Leagues. Yesterday, Little League World Series, Japan and the States, California to be exact. It was a great game. People <laughs> being thrown out at home. It was a big tough battle. Big from these kids. And these kids are what, 13, 14 years They're old? They're 13 years old, and, and some of them... <laughs> I know, we, this brings our attention. <laughs> the pitcher uh, for the California team is 13 years old. Six foot four Six and 166 four. pounds, right? He threw a no-hitter in the, in the <laughs> tournament. He hit a grand slam, hit a three-run home run. I think we have to have a new rule here. If you're six foot four, you don't get to play in the Little League World Series. Go straight to the majors. But also, remember, just a couple weeks ago, we were doing some research, and we found from another team in Hawaii, in Ohio, yeah. a kid, 12-year-old, 
200 what? pounds, six, six foot two. two, wearing size 15 shoes. It's 12 year old. It's just crazy. What do they feed these kids? I don't know. So anyway, Japan, congratulations, Japan. Third time in the last four years they've won the uh, Little League World Series. There'll be more coming later on the show. You're watching Breakfast Television right here on City.